let's modify some vanilla loot tables. New topics added to the Forge and Fabric courses, such as tameable and writable entities, projectiles, throwable projectiles, and boats, as well as first steps to biomes and dimensions. Courses linked in the description below. Alright, friends, it's back in the channel once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be modifying vanilla loot tables, and this works in a different way than you might expect. We're not adding anything to a data folder or adding any JSON files. We're actually going to use the loot table events modify for this. So for that, in the util package, we're going to make a new Java class called the mod loot table modifiers. And this is going to look kind of like this. First of all, we're going to have a public static void. And this method is going to be called the modify loot tables over here. There we go. And for this, what we need to do is we need to call the loot table events dot. And you can see there's the replace event and the modify event. So if you want to replace a loot table, you can do it like this. And with modify, you're going to modify it. We're going to call the register method over here. And then you just start typing in the resource manager and then hit the tab to autocomplete this. We're going to fill this up with an open curly bracket. And inside of here, we're going to modify a couple of loot tables. How do we modify loot tables? Well, for this, we need the identifier of that loot table. To find out what the identifier is, you can go to the external libraries all the way to this one right here, Minecraft Merge Project, root 120.1, net fabric yarn, and so on and so forth to the data folder, Minecraft. And then we want to go to the loot tables. And then here you can see basically this is the root. And then from there you want to go. So for example, if you want to change the grass block, you would call this the grass right here. This is the grass block that actually drops that drops seeds, for example. And then, of course, there's other stuff like the chests over here in different structures. So let's just say, for example, we're going to have a private static final identifier. It's going to be the jungle underscore temple underscore ID equal to a new identifier. Of course, of the Minecraft namespace, we don't usually have to specify this, but I just like to have this explicitly stated. And this is then going to be chests slash jungle underscore temple. There we go. That's pretty awesome. And then let's just duplicate this, for example, for the creeper here in this case. And then this is instead of chests, right? This would then be loot tables, entities. And then you can see the creepers right here. So this would be entities. And then this is the creeper. In that way, you can basically select anything. And then with the way to modify this is we're going to say if the jungle loot table ID, for example, is equals to the ID that we are specifying in the, in the modify right here, then what we can do is we can basically modify the specific loot table. The way to do this is uh, actually in a way that I'm going to copy over because the way that this works is that we're not going to go crazy over here. So let's just take a look. Basically, we want to make a custom loot pool builder over here and the roles over here and conditional and with and apply. What this all means is that, well, they, these are all the things added to loot tables. So we've seen the loot tables previously, and this is just basically the same thing, just in written form. And overall, what this means is that this here is the chance, right? So on a high level overview, here you can add a certain chance that a certain item is added to a specific drop. In this case, a one is going to make it drop 100% of the time, right? If we were to put in 0.5, this would be 50% of the time. In this case, we're going to keep it at 100% and we're going to drop the metal detector. So that's the way that you choose the item here. And then here it's between one and one. So you could also say between one and two, and then there's either going to be one in there or two. And that really is the whole ordeal here. Similar with the creeper ID over here. Let's just duplicate this as well. And you can see this is going to add the coal briquette once again with 100% certainty. As always, the numbers highly recommended to play around with them and see what you can get to balance it basically for yourself. But that is the general overview view and the general idea. You basically just want to make sure that whatever ID you're specifying is the ID in here and then just change the loot table builder over here for the table builder. And that's pretty much all that there's to it. We want to call the modify loot tables in our custom class over here in the tutorial mod class. So this is going to be the mod loot table modifiers dot modify loot tables. And that's it. This is going to modify the loot table specified over here. You can of course add a many many more but this is just some examples. So let's go into the game and see if it works. All right, found us back in Minecraft and let's just get the creeper first and foremost. And you can see, there we go. A coal briquette has been dropped and then we just need to find a jungle temple. And there's already a jungle next to us. Let's see if we can find one. Let's just actually locate it with the structure, though. That's a little bit easier. This would be a jungle pyramid, it's called. There you go. And there we go. Let's take a look. And there we have it. The metal detector found right here. Absolutely freaking awesome. And that is modifying vanilla loot tables. And that's already it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll actually also add items to the suspicious sand. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.